Have you ever encountered a situation in where someone did you a favor and you couldn't help but question their intentions? Ladies, I know you know what I'm talking about. Let's look at the oldest trick in the book. Can I buy you a drink? When this scenario occurs, a red flag immediately goes up in the girl's head. She has to make a spot judgment on whether she wants to dedicate the next 10 minutes to giving this guy the impression that she's at least remotely interested in ending her night with him. The girl realizes this. The guy realizes this. The situation is perfectly transparent. Instead of a simple, hello, my name is, the male attempts to expedite the process at the expense of effectiveness. But why? To examine the power of reciprocity, let us look at an experiment done by Cornell University professor Dennis Regan. In his study, two subjects were put into a room for a reason not relevant to what was being observed. As is the case with many experiments, the actual behavior under examination takes place during the subject's downtime, in their natural state. In this example, one of the subjects, the Confederate, left the room during a two-minute break and returned with a pair of colas, one for himself and one for the other subject. I asked the experimenter if I could get myself a Coke. He said it was okay, so I got you one too. During the control portion of the experiment, again the Confederate leaves the room, but this time returns without a cola. Later on, after the supposed experiment was over, the Confederate asked his fellow subject for a favor. He was selling raffle tickets, and if he sold the most, he would win a prize. Any would help, the more the better. The result? The subjects who had received the cola ended up buying twice as many raffle tickets as those who hadn't received anything. The sole act of the initial favor increased the subject's purchasing behavior by 100%. <clears throat> Can I buy you a drink? The study was later duplicated, but this time, the subjects had to fill out a survey after the experiment's conclusion to indicate how much they liked the Confederate. Reagan was curious to the effect of how much a person was liked and how this influenced the subject's raffle ticket purchasing behavior. In the scenario where there was no cola given as a favor, purchasing behavior directly correlated with how likable the Confederate was. No surprise there. Get this though, for those who owed the Confederate a favor, it made no difference whether they liked him or not. They felt a sense of obligation to repay him, and they did. Can I buy you a drink? Another example of the power of reciprocity has been demonstrated by the Hare Krishna religious organization. Although far less prevalent than today, this Hindu sect flourished in the 1970s by way of a new fundraising technique. Previously, this group had a less than favorable image in the eye of society due to their eccentric fundraising strategy, which included wearing bright robes while chanting and bobbing in unison in busy city centers. In need of a new strategy, the Krishnas would solicit unsuspecting citizens and provide them with a gift, usually a flower, in which the recipient was not allowed to return. No, it is our gift to you. Unsurprisingly, once the victim has begrudgingly accepted this gift, the solicitor quickly asks for a contribution. Does this work? More often than you'd think. For nearly a decade, this was Krishna's biggest source of income. It resulted in funding the ownership of temples, businesses, houses, and property in 321 centers in the United States and overseas. Best of all, the gift often quickly became trash, as witnessed by author Robert Cialdini himself. The inner sense of indebtedness caused by the power of reciprocity often causes the original recipient to repay the favor to an extent far greater than the value of its original gift. So, the next time Rico Suave approaches and asks, can I buy you a drink? Know that you're receiving more of a subconscious sense of repayment than you are an alcoholic beverage. Unless, of course, that person is me. That's just the goodness of my heart.